Napoleon marches to victory or defeat. Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome back to another glorious Napoleonic Total War 3 online battle. Today we have a 4 vs 4 as a coalition of French and German troops come together to defeat the forces of Spain, Austria and Russia. So it should be a very, very exciting battle. We can already see the French making their way forward on another glorious map. I mean, this is one of my favourite things about Napoleonic Total War 3 uh, is just the, the, the assortment of really, really cool maps that they have at their disposal you can see one of the french corps over on this left hand side using the road itself to make its you know its army forward and get ready to this crossroad but as you can see the spanish are quickly moving in so quickly taking stock of where the corps are i don't want to run through all the units and stuff but we have one french corps over on this left hand side uh they're mainly making their way through the road on when you march on roads in this mod basically makes you move a lot faster so it's always a good idea to you know move your forces around if you you want to quickly maneuver around the battlefield we also have a french corps in the center they're going to be taking up arms and i guess engaging whatever's in this forest which is going to be a really good defensive position for the austrians and the spanish which are coming into view right now over on this right hand side as well we have the german force of the Württemberg, which is i believe just above of um just above of switzerland i think is where they are and uh, like kind of left of Bavaria. I think that's where about this faction is. I might be mistaken. And they're going to be supported by another French corps. And they're going to be coming up against the Russians. And the Russian cavalry is already out in force. But it looks like the French corps is going to make its kind of stand again along these roads. And that's one of the really awesome things you get to see about this mod. Is a lot of the battles are actually over strategic positions. Because they're really really useful are actually emphasized in this mob which i feel like isn't necessarily as emphasized in normal total war games which is a really real big shame because they can be you know really awesome to suddenly see you know people fighting over a crossroad because if you hold this crossroad you can basically maneuver your men to either side of the battlefield really really effectively as we see some voltiers from the, the french moving into the woodland oh i can already tell this is going to be a cinematic beautiful battle because there's so much forest. Um, but the main kind of look of this battle is going to be kicking off right here. As we do actually have some of the skirmishes right now. Scaring off a bit of the Russian cavalry. Oh, is that? Oh, that's a Helldeer expedition. So I think this is a, a British expeditionary force to Russia. I believe. This faction. I think so, but maybe not. It looks like their flag it is, but I'm not too sure. Let me know in the comments what that faction is all about. So this is great for the French over on this right-hand side. They're going to be taking control of this farmhouse, which is a great strategic position. Um, again, if you don't know in this mod, melee engagements are extremely brutal, and it's very hard to get your units into melee, but if you can get your units into the side of a you know an enemy line, you're going to be doing great. There we go, the first volley coming off duking away against the uh, against the skirmishes of the Russian side right there. They're going to be shooting and moving by the Germans. They managed to secure a house as well. Nice. We're going to be receiving a bit of fire, losing a couple men as they try and reform up. I imagine to make space for the rest of the army. We can see the overall fight. The Russians coming into view right now as you don't necessarily get to see all of the enemy forces forming up in Napoleon because for some reason... A beautiful volley. For some reason, you, you just can't see the other side in these battles. As well as that, you know, again, I'm, I'm saying this is, I mean, I've done enough of these Napoleonic battles that you guys should really know how the mod works by now. But just for anyone who is maybe a bit new to it or have never seen this before, um, units that are a lot more dense, so they're not as many lines, have a much better and higher morale than those of them which are really spread out. So that's why you'll see a lot of these players actually making their lines really de like deep. And that's a really cool thing, you know, it's, you know, they're more compact, so they have like a higher morale, and I think that's quite cool. So over on this left-hand side, it does look like the French are going to be able to secure this crossroads pretty un unchallenged. There's no cavalry coming in, and if they can kind of head and whip out the rest of their soldiers into this forest, that's going to be a big no-no for the Spanish to really try and advance. We have some pretty nice French units right here. I think by the sounds of it, we have some cannon shooting. Yeah, they've set up some cannon on the road as well, which is just so amazing. Canister shot can do so much damage if they get too close, and then this cannon can just basically just dominate and lock down this road. Really, really effective at keeping the enemy at bay. And morale is really important in this mod as well. You can see one or two shots finding their mark, but nothing too crazy. But the main engagement is going to be over here on the right-hand side as the French have engaged the Austrians in the centre. 
And we're going to be having from woodland to woodland shooting right now. We'll actually take a look from the Austrian point of view. And visibility is going to be very, very stark here. Yeah, you can barely even see, just shooting the enemy direction. But again, that's what kind of, I guess, a lot of these Napoleonic battles were all about. It's just shooting in the enemy direction as much as you could because of the smoke was just so horrific. Again, the French kind of taking this advantage of just securing the roads as much as they can so that if they do need to... Oh, that looks beautiful coming from the forest. If they do need to re-maneuver their forces, they easily, easily can. The French are going to be shooting off there. We hear the horns over on the right-hand side, and I think we're going to have a little bit of a melee here. We have a huge cavalry engagement right now, and I don't quite understand how cavalry engagements work. You know, I do, but I don't. You know, I, I don't really know what units beat what units at the moment. But we can see a huge horse engagement going on right now. And cavalry can be re like cavalry is really important in this because not every unit can form square. Only select units can form square in this mod. So much horse being committed here, and it looks like the Russians are going to be trying to commit a few units over here as well to try and basically secure this. Yeah, this is actually massive. Wow! Wait, where are all the German? They they fallen back. They've fallen back and basically allowed the Russians to push up here and corner them. Wow, this is scary. The, uh, the Wittenberg units need to kind of almost fall back here and curve in because they've basically given up this entire engagement right now. And as we can see, the Russians with the support of the Austrians turning up. We've got some Austrian crossiers moving in. And we're going to be able to basically clear this up. However, the Wittenberg cavalry is not going to give up this battle lightly. And they're going to be charging in as well, looking for blood. I mean, again, just look at this battlefield right now. I mean, just look at that. There's nothing more epic than this, right? Like, just look at the battle lines. And you can constantly see them, like, kind of converging and molding to the engagement. So we are currently over here, which is a bit weird because it's, like, the other side to where we actually are. We're on the right, but for some reason, the map shows us on the left. But, yeah, as you can see, like, the, the German left-hand side is having to curve back in right now. And it looks like the Spanish are making some good ground, but in the center, the French are also making ground, looking to pursue their greater numbers. And they're going to be getting close. So, obviously, the closer you are to the enemy line, the more damage you're going to be doing. And as you can see, the Austrians do not want to get into straight-up firefight with the French. But the French are not going to be letting them retreat without, you know, action. They're going to be firing and advancing. They want to try and close the distance because they have the superior numbers. They want to obviously make sure that they use that to their advantage. And again, another volley going out. Those of them who didn't shoot in the first place are going to be reloading. But the French do need to be careful not to go too far away. Obviously, they can resupply up here. And as you can see, because the Austrian line in the center basically looked to go ahead and put pressure on this, in this German flank, which is definitely helping, they've obviously left their center a bit vulnerable. So they're going to be sending over another bunch of infantry, uh, four more companies or regiments, I should say, and also a unit of cavalry as well. They're going to be charging in, but also quickly repelled as they, some more French cavalry appeared from the forest. We haven't really taken stock over on the Spanish side quite yet, but as we can see, the French are, you know, in the forest, giving them a bit of extra protection. Bit of fire going off there. Go on, French, give them a volley from the forest. Spanish, though, not giving up without a fight. They're a bit out of position, and you can see they're trying to, to basically use their formation you know basically trying to keep the distance from the French they don't want to necessarily win this battle uh, right up because they just don't have the guns to do so we do have some Austrian cavalry charging in onto the skirmishers however they were counter charged and that's going to be horrific for the cavalry's morale you know being counter charged just really does hurt you however if they can maybe get some extra kills off on these skirmishers it's going to be big but it feels like the Austrians maybe have just gone a step too far and they've lost their cavalry unfortunately French are straight up duking, but we do see a pretty big engagement going off there. There's a lot of Austrian and Spanish cavalry, I imagine, mounting for a assault. And one of the things I love about this mod is the fact that a lot of the engagements, a lot of the movement is scripted in the sense of it's obvious to see what the enemy are doing. Well, not obvious, but it's easier to see what the enemy are doing 
because units move so slowly. So you could tell that there was going to be a huge in, uh, a huge charge right here. Luckily, this unit can form square. And that's why you're going to see a lot of these units who can form square on the flanks. You can tell that the unit can form square by that square next to their name on the unit card. But, you know, that, it was pretty obvious that the Spanish and the Austrians were going to charge because the cavalry was slowly moving over here. And, you know, the French have to kind of react and kind of counter-react to that. The right-hand side has been resupplied by one of the French corps. They've kind of shifted over right more. But they're looking to hold this house with as much as they can. The German flank has kind of now reconsolidated as well. Like, Wittenberg is German. I know it's in the HRE. Or is going. it was in the HRE. And I'm pretty sure it's like... Southern Germany. I could be mistaken, but apologies if I'm um, if they're not like in your your around that area or something. It's just my ignorance. Let me know in the comments down below. But I'm pretty sure these are basically Germans. But you can see they're basically reconsolidating. I imagine they're gonna probably be making their way back in and maybe resupplying elsewhere. But that nice little cavalry assault has basically pushed the French back, which was pretty nice by them. Over on this hand side as well, it looks like the Spanish have kind of maybe regained control. And, you know, they forced the French actually to retreat backwards into the forest once more. So lots of backs and forths in this battle. And it's just one of the things I love about Napoleon is just you don't get this. You don't get this in any other total war. You don't get this back and forth. You don't get this strategic maneuvering. You don't get it in Napoleon total war. You only get it because of the awesome Napoleonic free mod. But it just adds so much strategic flavour to the battlefield. As you can see, the uh, French are just volleying out. Three shots a minute. Reloading. Preparing themselves. I think that's again going to be pushing back the Austrians. You know, it's just so much back and forth. And you're getting so many of these cool engagements as both sides advance. The Russians are looking to close the distance now with their superior numbers. But that's going to come in. And the French have set up some light artillery. Some four pounders? They're four pounders? Yeah, some four pounders. Over in their line. That's really, really effective. Because canister shot can just shred infantry. Obviously, it's, it's very vulnerable to being shot at and, you know, cavalry charges and stuff if you bring it back close to the battle line. But if they can get some shots off, it's just a really effective way. And we'll take a look at this. Uh, yeah, so it doesn't look like this is like a, a Russian-British force being brought out. Brutal volley against the French there. Again, you can see how the map has curved in. You know, the Russians have basically pursued this, but it kind of opens themselves up to the Germans from coming. And they're probably going to try and do exactly that. But the Russians slash British do not want to let them do that. So they're actually, you know, reforming up here. So the Germans are basically going to try and come around the flank. But the British and the Russians are going to be trying to stop that. However, they are being bombarded by some of these six-pounder artillery pieces right here. They're going to be harassing the Russians as much as they can. Oh, one of the enemy generals has gone down as well. Who's? Oh no, the Russian general has been slain by a rogue cannon shot. I mean, that's one of. I mean, he's pretty fucking far back as well. I hope that that he wasn't being sniped. I don't think he was. This mod tends to have a lot of bullets as well as cannons just ranging, you know, off into the distance. So I think that was just a historical, you know, unlucky maneuver right there as we get a Spanish cavalry charge which tried to run in here um, and tried to kill the cow. The oh, they did as well. That was a great move there by the Spanish charging in there and taking out the French cannon on the road. The French cavalry was not fast enough. However, they are going to be charging down these uh, Spanish regiments as well who advanced up. This one managed to form square. So this one will be able to repel the Spanish cav uh, the French cavalry. But that's a great maneuver by the French to withstand that. However, we're getting grenadiers charging in now. And grenadiers are really effective in melee combat. However, more of the Spanish cavalry is now throwing themselves into this battle. This is going to be a decisive move. Because if the Spanish can clear up the French cavalry on this right-hand side... They're going to be able to basically dominate this area. And you can see the Spanish moving forward a lot of their forces. But they just don't want to go closer to that, that forest line. However, the French are going to seize this opportunity. Realising that they probably have the upper hand here now. Taking these guys out. Especially as the Spanish have actually committed three, com uh, three regiments over to this side. And we can actually see the French falling back a what, five regiments right here. To reform and maybe look to go elsewhere. 
And they're going to commit two more back, I guess, to secure this flank. But it's interesting that they're re-maneuvering three regiments using this road, which is really smart by them, by the way. Using the road to quickly redeploy their infantry. But yeah, the Spanish have been overwhelmed on this flank. The Grenadiers coming in with the support of the cavalry, basically just clearing out what was over here. And now we can see the French moving up. We've got a heavy melee going right now. A nice little cavalry charge in the rear here, which is what's going to happen. No, the Grenadiers are going to come in, I think, and finish off the Spanish, yep, with the Lancer cavalry as well coming in. And I think this is going to give the, the French a massive upper hand now. So that's also one of the things you have to keep in mind as well, that the French probably couldn't see the Spanish company or regiments, I should say, until they decided to start moving these guys back, until they started to move stuff into here. So the Spanish probably snuck through this woodland into the flank of the French right here, which was just really cool. Again, having that line of sight adds so much. Again, we're just taking, taking a nice little bird's eye view right now. I mean, just look at that. That's just awesome. You really get to the full scale. You can even go higher as well, which is just crazy. You can really get the scale of the battle. I should do this more. I don't know why I don't do this more. Because you really get to take a look. I didn't even realize you could do this, if I'm honest. But taking a look at the overall battlefield, we're definitely going to use this more. Because it's so hard to kind of get a really good glimpse of the battlefield in its entirety. Probably need to move in a little bit faster right there. There we go. That's probably good, right? Yeah, that's probably uh, good. So as you can see, the Germans have fallen back once again over on this right-hand side. Um, they've really been kind of just a holding force, allowing the French to do their job. We see a big little push right here as well by the uh, by the French cavalry. However I, think, however, I think they're being pushed back by the Austrians. The Austrians seem to throw in more cavalry there. The center has basically taken a break as the French go and off and engage the Spanish. And you can see the Spanish actually going invisible right there as well. So they are using that fog of war. But the French core on the left-hand side are definitely maneuvering in right now. I did not realize you could even do that. That's very cool. But the French using the advantage. They want to stay in the forest as much as they can with these regiments. I don't know why I keep on trying to call them companies. But I think the Spanish are going to be beaten back here. They still have a lot of units. And they've also brought up their, ca their cannons as well. So these 9-pounders and these 6-pounders are going to be able to shoot canister shot. Basically, yeah, do a lot of damage. I mean, look at that. Look at that, uh, that unit just getting ripped apart there. I think that's why you're seeing the French retreat back to a forest. What I would love to see is the French using their men to basically surround these couple units of... Uh, these couple units of Spanish, which have kind of come off here. Even though I think the French are, the French are going to be able to dispatch them. Just, they look like these guys are pretty good. Here we go, a volley from them. You can just about see the Spanish in the distance. The Spanish are looking to close the distance. So they're obviously believing that their guns are better. I mean, they have three regiments right there. Whereas the French are down to two, so they could definitely use that to their advantage. Not very, not a big distance either, so you could maybe even just try and engage with two. And then advance up with other stuff. I hear the hoofs of cavalry as well, maneuvering around. Oh, there's just some more Spanish coming in. Yeah, they've managed to close the distance. This unit just popped out of nowhere, and the French are going to have to retreat. They just don't have the guns to match this, and they don't want to get out of flank. So, as I said again, the Spanish are probably going to unleash another volley, taking away at the French line and forcing them back. And again, this is such a back and forth on both sides right now. No side really giving up any quarter right now. The Austrians are going to go for another push in the center, looking to maybe break them with the support of the Spanish. I mean, they've basically caved them in right now. They waited for the Spanish to come, and they're curving in this uh, this line of, uh, of French soldiers. The Germans are just so patient on this right-hand side. Look at them. They're, they're basically just a holding force, allowing the other units to come in. Oh, a French uh, uh, French skirmisher unit is going to be getting chopped down by the Austrian Hussars. There's going to be a little bit of counter fire, but nothing too crazy whatsoever. Also, as we can see, the uh, Russian light infantry has been getting picked apart, but they've obviously been getting some good pot shots off onto the French regiments, which are stationed up here. 
And again, these firefights have been raging for a long time. So we might start to see a few units running out of ammunition. That cannon fire as well is just brutal in the French line. What are these, like, four-pounders? Yeah, four-pounders. What's interesting as well is... Oh no, another general has been hit by, I think, a rogue shot. What one is this? This is a French general. Yeah, I think he got hit by a rogue cannonball just bouncing over. I assume that's the case. The Snyder people are shooting their generals, you know. The gentleman's uh, code and all. The French are going for a big push here. Again, I think the French center can beat the Austrians if they just commit to it. And that's why the Austrians have constantly retreated back. They also have a very good, you know, position over here. There's more French regiments coming in. The French are just looking to hold this with what they have. But the Spanish are moving in with a lot of men as well. Oh, look at these. These volunteer dudes. They've got, like, kilts on. That's a pretty cool. They're going to be reloading their, uh, their muskets. There's still just so much, so many French Frenchies in here. But I think the French are basically just, their plan is to just hold this line. Um, hold this forest line. And then commitment over here. And that's exactly what we're actually going to be getting. Are these grenadiers moving in? Yes, I managed to get some grenadiers into the side of the French or the Spanish regiment that was actually engaging. And this is going to you know, break out into some pretty heavy hand-to-hand -hand combat, which obviously the Grenadiers are much more trained with. And they're also supported by some Lancer cavalry as well. That's a really nice move because it means that obviously they can't form the square. I'm not sure if the Spanish regiment can form the square. It can. Because they're already engaged by the French uh, line, they can't then get out of that. And if they obviously don't want to do, if they don't want to, if they want to form square, then the Grenadiers will come in and slaughter them. And we're going to be seeing a massive push right now. As uh, there's a big portion, there's what, four? There's like, there's like six, reg, uh, yeah, six Austrian regiments who are still maneuvering over to re-support the center after the Spanish line has fallen. The French are going to seize this opportunity and basically just shove forward everyone using their advantage. And this can cut off the right-hand side for the coalition side. You know, the Russians and the British Russians are going to be completely cut off if, if this is successful. And the Austrians see this. They're going to basically be trying to get the hell out of this battle. Because if they stay here, they're just going to get outgunned. And the French are going to pursue them, basically pushing them forward. Now, obviously, the, this could, they don't want to chase too far, maybe. Because the Russians might look to come in. But then maybe the French can then use their soldiers over here. I'm really surprised how many reserves the right-hand side does have. And that the uh, the Austrians are still being outnumbered in the centre, considering that right flank has, you know, basically an entire German corps. Even if they have taken heavy casualties, granted, the Russians have managed to withstand them and push them back pretty heavily. Ooh, the Austrians are going to come in and maybe you know, maybe hit this flank. There's, what, five regiments here. The five regiments that are manoeuvring over, they could form up along this road and basically just hit the, the French in the side. And as you can see, the French are going to be reforming up now to match them so that they don't get outflanked. But now the Russians, yeah, this is exactly what I was saying. The French need to be careful not to go too far in this battle because now the Russians are throwing over five cores. Is that four cores? No, five cores. Yeah, for a second I thought this might have been cavalry. They really want to put that pressure on in the centre. Look at that. They're, you know, you can see some of the, uh, the Austrian line. They're starting to take heavy casualties now. Oh, that was a good volley as well as these guys. They can't obviously... They need to retreat back because they can't stand here because then the back line can't shoot. So the French are just out positioning the Austrians right now. And it's causing some pretty heavy losses. And it seems like this centre, which I was saying, has always been such a key part of the battle. It seems like it is starting to crumble. However, the French have gone very far, and as you can see, they're going to have to push back. They don't want to get, you know, surrounded, outmaneuvered, as a, a lot of soldiers are now coming in the centre. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if we saw some soldiers moving up along the road as well. Then again, you're just seeing such a casual kind of a right flank here. They're just looking to basically hold these guys in reserve, and you can now see that we're actually going to be getting some of the uh, Württemberg troops, uh, I think it was four, four regiments and a French reserve regiment, as well as a French cavalry, moving over to the central point. More Spanish as well are coming in, wow. 
More Spanish are being committed, which could be a great sign for the French to push them. That's exactly what they're doing. The coordination for the French side looks like it's on point right now. It really, really does. Are they shooting? Are they, they're not fighting, right? Or are they? No, I think it's just cannon fire breaking the Russian right. It looks like as well like the French have the cavalry advantage now as well. After taking out a lot of the uh, Spanish cavalry, it seems like they definitely have the advantage. Because I can see quite a few uh, regiments there. We're going to be getting... Uh, can any of these guys form square? They can't. And you can see they're pulling back because of that. So that's what I'm saying. Like, these battles, these maneuvers are quite telegraphed. Because, you know, units move slowly in this. Or I should say they move realistically in this mod. So as you can see, the Russians are having to retreat because they don't have a square. So they're pulling back from this battle. And you can really start to see the morale. I think that's one of the Russian regiments just straight up broke right there. Taking cannon fire. And now the French are going to seize this opportunity. It's all happening in the center point right now. The French are proving their skill with the musket. Definitely, definitely some good stuff, and they are breaking the Austrians. However, we're going to see a last-ditch charge here by the Austrians. The Austrians over Russians are going to be going in with the support of cavalry. And none of these guys can form square either, so this is going to be catastrophic if they can get in. They're going to be counter, obviously, getting a nice volley off on the Austrian cavalry. And obviously, a frontal charge is not going to be ideal, as the French cavalry also coming. I think this is going to make or break the battle right here. However, whatever happens here, however, the Austrians are coming in with some elite cavalry. The Russians are breaking, though. And whoever wins this engagement is going to be huge. The Austrians being repelled by the French infantry, getting one or two volleys off is huge. And you can see a mass break right now. The Austrians are in full-on retreat. They can't withstand the pressure in the center. We're also getting another French Dragoon unit coming in. They are some Russian Grenadiers here, which might look to come in, but I think the heavy French cavalry... Oh my god, the cannon shot ripping through the Russians! And more Russian cavalry coming to the fight! Wow, this battle is just going crazy right now. All of this action just popping off. It is huge. The French are pursuing this center, though, looking to drive them into the ground. And the French, it does seem like, are going to claim this victory in the center. We have more Russian regiments quickly making their way over. The French across the airs, oh, Zars, sorry, are going to be charging into these Grenadiers. The Grenadiers are going to be an effective unit to fight back. But can they do it? You know, it's going to look pretty close here, whoever routes first. It looks like the cavalry, though, are going to be over to outmatch the Russians. However, they are going to rout also. They just did not have enough support. And we also are going to get the Germans being broken here by the Russian Grenadiers charging in. But then they're going to be pushed back. As I said, it's so risky to go into melee combat, obviously, like it would be in the period. Could you imagine charging at someone with a pointy stick? And imagine for a second you got stabbed by a bayonet. Like, that, would, that most likely wouldn't kill you. You'd sit on the floor, bleeding out in extreme pain. So, you know, if you tell me if, you know, bayonet charges, you would have wanted to do that. No, I don't think anyone would. Oh my god, yeah, this entire side could be a good opportunity. Oh my, look at this, actually. Look at the overall numbers here. It seems like the French have been slowly withdrawing men and pushing them to the centre. Because... I mean, obviously now the Russians have pushed over a lot of men with the support of the Austrians. But as you can see, like, the French have, what, one, two, three, four... The French only have, like, five regiments, maybe six or seven if you include the ones over here, over in this section supported by the, you know, seven or eight regiments of the Germans. And they do have, I guess, a couple of reserve ones, but it feels like they've been slowly pulling back men and pushing them into the center. Maybe under the nose of the Austrians. That central fight has just been huge. And I think it's, if, if the French can capitalize on that, push the Russians all the way back, that's going to be huge. If we take a look at the map as well, we can see, see this huge you know, dysfunction in the battle lines right now. The Spanish over on this uh, left-hand side have basically been cut off from the rest of their allies. And if the Austrians break in the center, which they're looking like they're doing as the French fire in advance... It's only going to be a matter of time until the Spanish are completely overwhelmed. 
And again, yeah, this seems like a... Re this seems like... Are they pushing more regiments over? It seems like the French are being doing really good tactics here of just pulling men out. Because I doubt the Spanish can see these guys because they're behind trees. So it seems like the French are just slowly using these forests to sneak men elsewhere. Not a bad strategy. Oh, oh, this poor, poor unit of infantry. The Spanish are like, we need to break their flank. And realistically, stuff like this could, you know, have a huge effect on the French line. If the French didn't see it and they managed to sandwich some units, that would be huge. But we're getting French cavalry, heavy French crassiers, or maybe hussars. I can't quite see. Yeah, it's already over. They're going to form square, which is going to, you know, throw a lot of these horses. But now they're just going to be a sitting duck for the, uh, for the, uh, the two French regiments that come to deal with these guys. And basically what the French cavalry needs to do is they just need to sit here and basically stop these guys from doing anything. It looks like they're going to be charging them, actually. Okay, we're getting more of a spice set. The Russians and Austrians have basically formed. Also, how epic. We're 34 minutes, 30 odd minutes into this battle. And I feel like, you know, both sides are still going back and forth, back and forth. Which is just, you know, you just don't get this in many other Total Wars. You really, really don't. So hopefully you guys are enjoying it. If you are enjoying it and want to see more of these battles, be sure to drop that like and a comment. I'd really appreciate it. It helps out the channel. Looks like the Germans are finding they get their whistles wet after that initial engagement. We have some Jaegers over here. Reloading and preparing themselves. We've got a nice little, you know, kind of curve right here. They're going to be exchanging shots. With the Russians. And if they can use their numbers, which they do have, you know, multiple of. They can use these numbers and break this side. They can basically just completely cave in the right hand side. Which is already looking a bit scary. You can see a lot of Russian regiments moving over now to basically just support the Austrians. And you can see the French also turning around. And I think that's exactly what the Germans are going to be doing over here as well. In the center, it's basically just advancing this, you know, section of soldiers along here to, to re-engage them. Would not be a bad idea. You get another pretty big engagement right here. Both sides charging in a lot of men. And also, obviously, this little line over here as well. I say little. Looks like the French are going to be, you know, repelled a little bit, though. So that's pretty big, but I think the French again came out on top of this in this, this engagement. We managed to route, you know, there's a large amount of Russian regiments retreating from the battlefield. Whereas if we turn around, there's only a select few of French. So I think the French are slowly winning this battle bit by bit. There's actually another cavalry charge out here. The Spanish have some hidden cavalry. And they're going to get a great charge off from these Crassiers, who I don't think are going to be microed correctly. And that's going to be big right there. Taking out an entire unit of cavalry because it was stationary is going to be huge. However, maybe there is, I believe, some more French cavalry. You know, the Austrian cavalry over here. Yeah, they're going to be getting surrounded right now. It's probably going to break from a rear charge. That's pretty huge. There is more French cavalry rushing over, but it's just not going to be in time. And that was a really nice pick-off by the Spanish. Especially if they continue to push over here. Obviously, these guys can't form square. Neither can these guys. They are going to be able to shoot, you know, just straight up frontal charging infantry isn't really a good idea. Because you'll just be repelled by the, uh, by obviously the muskets being in front as well as the, uh, the shooting volleys. That's a great pick-off for the forces of the Spanish. Yeah, the Germans are completely caving in now and losing their numbers really effectively. Also looks like the, uh, there was an artillery rush. Yeah, so some of the, of, uh, I believe these are skirmishers, managed to overwhelm this artillery position. And that's the, uh, they've lost, the Russians have lost guns now, which is pretty big. But need to be careful, because as, as we were saying earlier... The French have been maneuvering a lot of men into the center to make this big push. So they are going to be quite heavily outnumbered over here. They're going to be throwing forward some cavalry, though. I don't know if these guys are going to be effective. I think they're going after the skirmishers. They're going to be straight up charging. I think they are. The Russians aren't going to be formed up to stop this. The Lancer cavalry going in. And they might be able to you know, silence a few of these guys as they do come in. This is also going to be slowing up the advance. I mean, now they're really vulnerable. And you can see they're getting shot at by, like, every... 
Russian regiment, but this is not necessarily a bad idea because this is slowing up. Yeah, the French cavalry is going to be routing. But this is slowing up the retreat. This is slowing up the Russians reforming up their battle line. So committing units like that, I don't think that was necessarily planned or that effective, but it did play its role and, you know, you can kind of take positives from that. God, look at this. Look how curved the battlefield is now, right? As we can see, the uh, Spanish are over on that right-hand side. I mean, it wouldn't be a bad... I guess I guess what they don't want to have happen is... I, I think they don't want to, what they don't want to have happen is the Spanish to retreat, and then all of a sudden the French just carve in and meet up with their battle line. So the Spanish keeping this French corps at bay is probably not a bad idea. However, as I said, it seems like the French have managed to get what, like... Oh, no, they're looking to kill the Spanish right here. They're not looking to reinforce the, the Austrian center. They're looking to basically use this woodland to come around and harass the Spanish and break them. Which again is not a bad idea either. And it looks like the Russians are just in full on retreat mode right now. They've been on the back foot for the majority of this battle. And I feel like that's mainly been down to the, the great um, communication on the French side. I feel like the French have had great communication this entire battle. Their organisation of where to put units and, you know, where they need reinforcements and where they need to push has been solid and on point. I mean, look how far back as well. Considering, you know, we, we started the battle right here, you know, along this line. And the Austrians are pushed all the way back here. That's pretty goddamn crazy. We can see the French forming up as well. You know, they've been thrown all the way back. Oh, and look at this as well. Uh, the French are seeing that the Russians are completely unorganized. Trying to fall back as fast as they can. And because they have the numbers, because the French have had to commit more and more men to that center. They're being completely run down right now. Completely run down. Broken and sent back. Yeah, the Russians are in full-on retreat. I think they're falling back to this victory point right here. So also, something if you didn't know about this mod, we'll, we'll zoom out so you guys can get a good picture of what's going on. If you guys didn't know, um, basically, these victory points, if the timer runs out of the battles, then whoever holds the most victory points obviously wins the battle. And as you can see, units are starting to run out of ammunition. Where is this? Over here? Yeah, so some of the units in the center are actually running out of ammunition, which is pretty crazy. But yeah, as you can see, um, the one, when you, you know, if a battle runs out of time, it's whoever holds these, these victory points. So necessarily, the Russians didn't have, I mean, no, actually, no, the Russians did have to attack. Because the, the, did they actually, hold on, am I, am I stupid? Yeah, no, so the Russians didn't actually necessarily have to attack. Yeah, the French were actually the ones who had to attack because, actually, no, they needed this point right here. Yeah, they needed this house. Um, to, to, okay, cool, so there's, there's four and one on both sides of an essential one, so, and the French got here first, so, yeah, the, the Russians did actually need to attack there. But we're starting to see the entire, you know, French corps routing now. A few charges coming in, hopeless charges, trying to break them. But how crazy is that, that you're actually seeing, like, a French regiment running out of ammunition? We have a UK fifth foot, the Potters of Northumbria. Got a 31st foot. The young buffs. The Russians will not stand, Sharp. They will not stand. I mean, as well, you can also kind of tell how the battle's going by just how much white is retreating from the battlefield compared to on the French side. The Russians are going to be trying to take out as many of them as they can before the retreat call is given. But I think the French cavalry is going to pursue this. Oh, it's actually Spanish cavalry coming. This was a great maneuver. A last-ditch effort right now by the Spanish to try and break some of the French lines. However, because there's so much cavalry coming in, that's going to be huge again. I think one of the general... Oh, this was actually a, a general unit by the Spanish. Wow. Going in for that last push. I think that's going to be, you know, a maneuver, like an idea for the French now just to commit down here and basically end this battle. Yeah, the entire Russian core is just gone now. There's two units as they retreat back to the building, so victory points, but 
You know, their morale has already really, really dwindled down. The Austrians are going to go again for one last ditch effort. Which is funny as well because a lot of the ammunition is also taken out. The French have pushed forward basically everything they have right now, yeah. The French have advanced everything, looking to, to crush the Russians. These French regiments retreating backwards a little bit into the, the support of the forest. But they maneuver around. They also have the, the huge cavalry advantage now as well. Sorry, I'm moving my camera a lot in these last couple minutes. Apologies. I know it can be a bit, like, blurry. Like, I know what's going on. I want to tell you guys stuff, but moving the camera is not always good. You want to try and keep it a bit centered. And maybe I've moved it way too much in this episode. Which, for that, I am eternally sorry. So, do these guys have ammunition left? I don't know if they do. I think this is maybe a unit that's run out of ammunition. The Austrians are obviously going to seize the advantage right there. Oh, the Austrians still have some fire left as that commander just loads out his, uh, his pistol. The Austrians are still here and they're out for blood. Another building being taken? Oh, over here they've overwhelmed. The Germans have finally overwhelmed the Russians. I think that's the entire Russian army gone. Oh no, there's a few. There's still a few more regiments here. Who are these guys shooting at as well? Some of the routing units. And yeah, you can just see the maneuver right here by the French Corps. But I think the Germans have basically been chilling this entire battle. We've not seen any huge moves by them. They've basically just been ordered to hold down that flank. And it's been really up to the, the central corps to really be the aggressive ones. Whereas the flanking corps, because even on the, uh, the Spanish side as well, they've mainly been very, very cautious with what they've been doing. Not looking to overextend. But as I said, that was a really nice maneuver just to slowly filter in more and more soldiers into the center and then make that big push. But it wasn't like it was an easy one-way push, you know. It was very back and forth. The Austrians fought back, then the French fought back, and so on and so on. And both sides tried to push them back. And it really came down to how the lines of the rest of the forces were, were lining up, basically. The Spanish came in to try and give the Austrians that big push, and when they did come in, the Austrians pushed when the, the Spanish turned up over on this on this side right here. And then when the French, you know, basically engaged the Russians, then they made a big push over in the center. The Russians tried to come over, but it was just a bit delayed. So you can see, if you are new to this mod, you can really see just, you know, how things shape up and how there's a lot going into it. It's not just a straight up my unit's better than your unit type of strategy. It's very much about, you know, the overarching strategy of the battlefield. It's about maneuvering. It's about taking battles. It's about fainting attacks. It's just like, I just love it. This is what Total War is all about. And hopefully you guys can agree. I mean, I'm not someone who really plays Napoleon Total War at all, but I can appreciate a great, great strategy and a great game. And I wish more Total War games had this type of feel to it, of this art, like huge battle, where it's not just a one-sided engagement, it's a back and forth. It's you know people resupplying, people using snide strategies of hiding men behind forests to reinforce the center to make a big push, you know? You definitely hear that feel of grandeur. I mean, especially when I zoomed out like that as well. I mean, even still, that looks insane, like... Especially if we like go like that. Oh, we should do this more like a proper bird's eye view. <laughs> I mean, you can see the Spanish, how they still there. Yeah, the entire rest of the uh, Austrians, Russians, and Russia, England, uh, or Russian GB cause is just completely broken now. And the Spanish are going to follow suit. So if you guys have, if any of the Napoleon Total War 3 guys are watching this, if you guys have any really cool replays, send them in to me over on my Discord. I don't always get a chance to Catch them over on the uh, NTW3 Discord. So if you guys have good uh, replays and you really want me to cast them, I am always looking for more battles. Go over on my Discord, the link will be down below in the description. And just dump, dump them in the battle replay section with a little description of like what the factions were. Maybe how long the replay is or roughly how long it is. That would be great. Because I'm definitely looking forward to casting more of these battles. It's been a couple weeks since I last did one. And I immediately remember why I did these. And there we go, the last charge. The Spanish haven't had a word yet, but the rest of the armies have been broken. 
And they're just going to straight up break as they charge him. Wow. And there we have it. The battle is over. The last Spanish regiments. The last one to hold was what? An artillery crew? An artillery crew and the Guardia Valona, which I think is like a guard unit. So obviously a very good one. But even they will break in time. And a very, very decisive victory this day by the French. And we'll just speed it up as the last couple of units do go down. I think that's everything. What's still left remaining? I don't know. One little regiment right here. These guys must be exhausted as well. As they charge in and finish them off. Yeah, there you go. Battle is won. Victory for the French. Very, very nice work. So if we take a look at the losses, yeah, as you can see, the the, the, the German core on the right-hand side didn't really have to do much. It was, as I said, a holding force on that right-hand side. They lost 375 and killed 500. However, look, I imagine we sent... I mean, look at all the French losses. But I imagine these were, like, central cores. Uh, yeah, I wonder who was on the left flank and out of these guys. Probably, probably like maybe this guy was on the left flank, the economic eagle. And then these guys were in the center. Massive kills, like losses to kills, very nice. I think economic eagle did the best KDA wise, like losing 500 and killing 1700. Very nice. And yeah, unfortunately, the, uh, the coalition just could not bring themselves to bear at this time. I'm sure next time though, they, they will show themselves as true warriors. As all of these guys are extremely good players. It's just this day it fell to the French. I feel like the French had better organisation in that battle. Um, and I mean, obviously, it's probably down to the fact that they have, you know, three uh, HRE members, whereas the other side, you know, maybe had a, a mix of clans, you know, LK, RG, and also this one as well, Grognard um, as well. So, as you know, it's probably that, that, that kind of clan mentality probably did show in that battle with the organisation and knowing how each other plays. Uh, take a look at the kills. I think we can only take a look at the German kills. Yeah, I think this is the German force. Uh, unfortunately, you can't look at the kills for everyone in Napoleon. But you can see that they're cavalry. Is this a cavalry or is this a general unit? I think it might be a general unit because of the picture. Getting over 300 kills. Cavalry doing good. And this, uh, this rifle doing nice as well with over 212 kills. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, be sure to drop a like and a comment down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.